Hello dear student. Today we will be learning a new chapter magnetosphere from your paper space science. In this chapter we will be learning about the magnetosphere of the earth that is magnetic field of the earth, earth's variable magnetic field, solar activity and earth's magnetic weather, solar wind interaction, the Chapman Ferrero closed magnetosphere, the Dunkey's open magnetosphere, the structure of magnetosphere such as magneto tail, the plasma sheet and plasma sphere and also the earth's irradiation belts. Magnetosphere Every celestial body is covered with a surface of magnetic field lines and that sphere or that place in the intergalactic area where a celestial body is covered by its own magnetic field is called the magnetosphere. The magnetosphere is a region in the space surrounding a celestial body where the dominant magnetic field is a magnetic field of that celestial body rather than the magnetic field of the interplanetary area. The magnetosphere is formed by the interaction of the solar wind and also the Earth's magnetic field. In this region, the charged particles are affected by the Earth's magnetic field. And this is created either by a star or by a planet which have an active interior dynamo. That is any planet which has an active core or any star which has an active plasma can create a magnetosphere of its own. In our planetary system, good magnetic fields are found in Earth, Mars and Jupiter. Now let us look into how the magnetosphere of the Earth works. The magnetosphere of the Earth was formed due to the motion of charged particles such as iron and nickel in the Earth's outer core. The Earth behaves as a huge bar magnet with magnetic field lines starting from the North Pole and ending at the magnetic South Pole. The magnetic North Pole is situated at the geographic South and the magnetic South Pole is situated at the geographic North Pole. And the magnetic uh, pole, the dipole of these uh, magnetic poles are shifted from the rotation axis of the Earth by 11 degrees. That is rotation axis and the magnetic axis of the Earth are tilted from each other at 11 degrees. So, uh, the geographic North Pole as well as the magnetic North Pole uh, is uh, pointed towards the same uh, direction but it is tilted by 11 degrees. The magnetic field intensity varies from 25 micro tesla to 65 micro tesla and it is very feeble and this magnetic field intensity varies with the altitude the longitude latitude and it's different at different layers of the atmosphere now let us look into how the magneto uh, field of the earth changes the geomagnetic field is highly varying as you have already seen, it is being interacted by the solar activity and every activities which is having uh, an interplanetary uh, space, occupying the interplanetary space. The magnetic field is highly affected by the interplanetary activities and also uh, which is uh, activities which is happening inside the deep core of the earth. Therefore, the magnetic field is not a constant one. It is highly varying. Its variation can be random, such as the variation happening uh, during a solar storm or a flare, or it can be periodic, such as the magnetic pole shift. The magnetic field reverses or the magnetic field changes happens uh, from uh, an instant, uh, from instant fluctuations to changes over years. So its changes as time scale is very different. It can be instantaneous changes such as which happens during magnetic storm or uh, magnetic storms or due to ionospheric dynamos that is electric field uh, produced in the ionosphere. 
there can be daily variations such as the diurnal uh, changes uh, or during the solar flares that is the sun facing side of the uh, earth's magnetosphere is different from that of uh, the opposite side so the same uh, point will be having different magnetosphere interaction or effects during the daytime and the nighttime and this is also a periodic change but this change also affects a lot and this is daily variations during solar flares the magnetic field is highly affected because solar flare contains many charged particles and these effects due to solar flares last for two to three days so there are daily variations there are monthly variations there are short time scale variations there are also variations which happens over years such as the magnetic field uh, pole reversal or change in the magnetic field uh, intensity or it can be change in the position of the north pole and the south pole the magnetic poles changes over time in 2021 the magnetic north pole was determined to lie in the west of a elsmere island which is in northern canada but in 2009 it was situated within the canadian antarctic and was moving towards russia in 2019 the pole was projected to move beyond the canadian antarctic and uh, currently it is situated somewhere outside the canadian antarctic and south pole is currently located near the coast of antarctica therefore the position of the north pole and the south pole also changes and this is a change which happens over years as we have already discussed the solar activity affects the earth's magnetic weather a lot because solar activity contains release of a lot of charged particles that is plasma contained uh, in, uh, in the outer sphere of the sun and it is affected by the earth's magnetic field and it directly have an effect on the magnetic weather of the earth. So there are mainly four types of radiations or two, four types of phenomenon which uh, mainly affects the earth's magnetic weather that are solar flares, the coronal mass ejection, high speed solar winds and also the solar energetic particles. The solar flares hits the sun facing surface of the earth. This hits only the sun facing surface of the earth. It contains photons, magnetic field as well as charged particles. And therefore, since it contains photons, we can see solar flares it affects the temperature of the ionosphere as well as the magnetosphere. The coronal mass ejection has a large clouds of plasma, plasma that is charged particles and the magnetic field from the sun that erupt from the sun. Therefore, coronal mass ejection contains uh, charged particles as well as magnetic field. Both this charged particle and the magnetic field interacts with the magnetic field of earth and during high intensity coronal mass ejection we often experience breakdown of uh, communication systems. There are high speed solar wind uh, streams coming from the areas of suns known as coronal holes or uh, sunspots and uh, these are released uh, periodically and uh, sun uh, during very high activity of sun we may uh, experience large number of uh, eruptions from the sun which affects the magnetic field of the earth the solar energetic particles are high energy charged particles primarily thought to be released by the shock formed at the front coronal mass ejections and the solar flyers. So solar energetic particles are these energetic particles which are coming along with the coronal mass ejection or solar flyers which appears uh, to be in front of these, these coronal mass ejection and solar flyers. They appears to be 
uh, by the front of these and they give a shock to the magnetosphere of the earth. Now let us see in detail how uh, solar wind affects the interaction. Uh, solar wind interaction, uh, wind interaction with the magnetic field of the earth. As we have already seen, uh, the solar wind will contain the magnetic field of the sun, uh, the charged particles from the sun and also maybe photons from the sun. From this, the charged particles will interact with the magnetic field of the earth and the magnetic field of the earth will deflect these charged particles using the Lorentz force. So by Lorentz force, the solar wind is, uh, uh, is contained from having a direct interaction with the earth's atmosphere. The magnetic field will deflect these using the solar uh, using Lorentz force. So the particle instead of directly bombarding into the atmosphere of the earth, it is being deflected right from the uh, magnetosphere and it travels along the sides of the or along uh, the atmosphere, along the outer sphere of the atmosphere. So uh, in such a way, actually the uh, magnetic field or magnetosphere helps protecting the atmosphere of earth. So the charged particles are not directly bombarded into the atmosphere. They travel around the planet. The magnetosphere spreads like a hemisphere in the sun facing side and it's drawn towards like a tail in the opposite side. There is a boundary beyond which the charged particle cannot enter the atmosphere of the earth. It is completely shielded and this region is known as the magnetopause and this uh, region is provided uh, by the magnetosphere and it is within the magnetosphere and beyond this region the charged particle from any solar activity cannot enter the earth's magnetic field or earth's atmosphere as you can see in the animation while the charged particle hits the magnetic field it uh, peels open the magnetic field lines. It peels open the mag as you can see here. When it hits the magnetic uh, magnetosphere, it peels open the magnetic field. And uh, during these uh, times, some particles can enter into the Earth's atmosphere through a small area, which is known as the polar cusp. So when the solar wind comes here, it peels open the magnetic field and this magnetic field will go like this. And during this time, these charged particles can enter into the earth atmosphere through a small area which is known as the solar cusp. And these charged particles entering the solar cusp will reach the polar region and will give rise to auroras, the aurora borealis, uh, which we already know. These aurora effects are uh, due to the charged particle entering the magnetic field uh, through this solar cusp. And all other magnetic uh, charged particles are deflected right back. And these are deflected uh, wind particles from the solar field and the uh, uh, magnetic field will go beyond in the opposite side as a magneto tail and uh, here after the reflection deflection of the magnetic field line it will come in contact again it will rejoin again and during the rejoining process also some of the charged particle can enter the earth's magnetic field they uh, atmosphere they can also go directly into the uh, polar region so there are two ways in which uh, the charged particles can enter and it can enter by the recombination or can be the partial recombination of the field of magnetic field due to the uh, solar flare and uh, during this region here we can experience uh, some of the charged particle dynamo and that uh, area where we can have 
uh, charged particles are called the plasma sheet and in plasma sheet the particles can move in two different directions there are also van allen bells these van allen bells are uh, due to are formed due to the trapped charged particles which is entering via the polar cusp and also due to the partial recombination of this magnetic field and this van allen bells contain uh, the plasma which is entering from uh, entering the atmosphere these van allen bells are also very important which helps protecting the earth's atmosphere now when a solar radiation comes up it peels off the magnetic field and the magnetic field will go beyond during this time the magnetic particles can enter through this polar cusp and they will form the charged particle will interact with the magnetic field and they will uh, contribute to aurora uh, formation in the northern regions now let us learn in detail about the van allen belts this is known as the earth's radiation belt the van allen belt is a zone of energetic charged particles that are captured and held around the planet by the planet's magnetic field this uh, van allen belt actually protect the charged uh, atmosphere from bombarding high uh, from the bombardment of high energetic particles these are uh, van allen bells itself has plasma uh, uh, cusped in it plasma which is uh, embedded in it so it will protect the earth's atmosphere from further bombarding of high energetic particles uh, the um, belt are in a region uh, of the magnetosphere these uh, van allen belts are found in the inner region of the magnetic field this van allen belts can uh, have a small devastating effect in the satellites because since these uh, belts contain high uh, charged a high density of charged particles this can interact with the sensitive components of artificial satellites and uh, this can endanger some of the uh, components of uh, satellites so van allen bells and there uh, when we look into the structure there are uh, two uh, regions of van allen bells there can be three or more uh, um, Uh, depending upon the situation and the time it changes from time to time mainly we can uh, see two uh, belts of van allen and that is outer radiation belt and inner radiation belt the inner van allen belt is about 100 uh, or 1000 km to 12000 km from the surface of the earth and it contains high concentration of electrons Uh, which moves uh, in a speed of around uh, 100 keV and it also has energetic photons which has an energy which is exceedingly high as 100 uh, mega electron volts the outer belt of the van allen it contains highly energetic electrons which has an energy of 0.1 mev to 10 mev and it is trapped in the earth's magnetosphere and the outer uh, radiation belt is highly uh, fluctuating and highly variable uh, in comparison with the inner radiation belt because it is being affected by most of the solar activity and it is found at around 13000 to 60000 km from the surface of the earth there are many models which was proposed uh, to uh, describe uh, the structure of the magnetosphere the first model comes from the chapman ferrero and it was proposed in the late 19s and uh, it uh, proposed a uh, magnetosphere which uh, has closed magnetic uh, lines that is just like a huge dipole 
so earth was considered to be a huge dipole so the magnetic field line will start from the northern di uh, northern pole of that dipole and will end up in the southern pole so it was considered as a huge dipole so the magnetic field lines are completely closed and uh, during this modeling was done by uh, solving the lorentz equation at the magneto pause so these uh, two uh, these two uh, scientists found that uh, beyond a certain uh, region the solar uh, activities the solar flare or the charged particle from the solar activities are not entering the uh, earth's field and that uh, point we already know that point is called the magnetopause so magnetopause is the region where the solar flare stops so these uh, two scientists assume that there must be a region in the magnetopause where this magnetic field line interaction with uh, the magnetic uh, uh, with the charged particle becomes zero so uh, he uh, proposed that the magnetic field uh, structure can be considered as having an infinitive conductive plate which is placed in the day side which pushes off the field lines so this infinite conductive plate which is placed in the uh, day side of uh, the uh, sun day side of the earth pushes the field lines in the equator region towards earth and also uh, that towards the higher altitude to back side so as we can see there is no magnetic field here so there is entry of the uh, charged particle here is also accounted into and towards the night side this pushes off the field lines beyond to the night side so this was a modeling given by the uh, champman ferrero closed magnetic field so to have an infinite conductive plate placed beyond this uh, the uh, they assumed another dipole which is placed at twice as distant from the earth so that this dipole can give a field which acts as an infinite conductive plate another modeling which came in 1961 was by Dunkey and he uh, his modeling was about an open magnetosphere and from his modeling the magneto the magnetic field lines of the earth planet are not stationary that is constantly changing and they continuously join merge open then join merge open in the interplanetary field so the magnetic field lines are no more closed uh, they continuously open then join rejoin and uh, they are completely uh, random they are not stationary the joint field lines are swept back over the poles to the pla uh, planetary magnetic tail the tail and the field of the planet's magnetic field are rejoined and start moving towards the night side of the planet so this magnetic field lines come join together go to the uh, night side and they rejoin and come back so uh, they are completely uh, changing and random the magnetic field lines are not described uh, not defined uh, they are completely changing with time now let us look into the structure the exact uh, structure of the magnetosphere as we know by now so the magnetic a magnetosphere is a constant structure because we are being constantly bombarded by the solar activities so we have a bow shock a bow shock is a space with interacts uh, uh, where the solar uh, flares or anything from the interplanetary area interacts with the magnetic sphere of the earth so the area where this interaction happens is called bow shock it is called shock because it creates some kind of a shock wave while it is interacting the second region is called magneto sheath the magneto sheath is uh, somewhat a dense area and uh, it is between the bow shock and the magneto pause and here the solar wind interact with uh, the magnetic field 
and uh, here we can experience we can see plasma particles from the solar wind are seen in the magneto sheet magnetopause we have already discussed about magnetopause so magnetopause is a region where uh, beyond which no particle can enter the magnetic field or enter the atmosphere so at this region the pressure from the planetary magnetic field completely balances the pressure from the solar wind and uh, therefore it uh, interacts with the so there are uh, no more plasma particles which are entering the earth's magnetic field at this magnetopause beyond this magnetopause no charged particle can enter the earth's atmosphere and the portion magneto tail magneto tail is the portion of the magnetic fields which are ripped off from the uh, solar activity they go beyond to the night side like a tail and this portion is called magneto tail some of the charged lines will rejoin near the magneto tail uh, and this can uh, promote the entry of some plasma particle into this region towards the night side and that region is called the plasma sheet and in plasma sheet uh, there are charged particle motion in two different direction and there, uh, there we can also uh, see van allen bells towards uh, just like a donut shape so this is the overall structure of the magnetosphere so today in this chapter we have learned about the magnetic field of earth and its variation the solar activity and about the earth's magnetic weather the magnetosphere modeling given by chapman ferrero its closed magnetosphere model and the open magnetosphere model given by dungey uh, we have also looked into the structure of the magnetosphere and also learned about the van allen radiation belts thank you